Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service today. I see lots of nice sunshine out there. What a blessing and a welcome sight that is to see. A few announcements in the light of the church today. Council members, please make note. Our next council meeting will be Monday, March 22nd. We had to move it a week uh, due to some other scheduling problems, so please make note of that. Also, if you notice in your bulletin, Monday Thursday service will be in at Trinity that evening. We will be celebrating Holy Communion, and that will start at 7 p.m. And we will be doing communion in a way that's familiar to all of you. Um, I shared that uh, process with them, and they're enjoying it. So that was a nice thing for them to find and change to. Also, when we're talking about Trinity, they are making their annual Easter eggs this year. I heard tell they were over 11,000 right now, and they still have two <laughs> weeks to go, I think. So they're, they're having a great time, and I think they're even working three shifts to try and accommodate those who want. The uh, best time to go, if you want any, is probably around 11 a.m. on any given weekday. They should be there and can accommodate your needs. Uh, let's see, hymn change. We have... For the first hymn, we're going to use number 335. You'll have to use your hymnal today for that. And Jonathan tells me we are going to sing the first and last verse of both hymns. So please make note of that as well. All right. The last thing I have here is you will see that Sylvia has joined me. Apparently I did something wrong. Here comes John. Oh, okay. <laughs> you will notice that Sylvia has joined me today. Um... Out of necessity, we need to have a lady that just in case something would happen to me, that I would become ill at the last moment, we've got someone who can step up and run the worship service. Now, we're not going to require her to share a message. That's not the case here. And she won't have to preside over communion. If we need either one of those, Linda will take care of us. But... Sylvia has agreed to help me that if something crazy and unbeknownst would happen to me in the last moment, we can still have a worship service. So today is her training day, and every once in a while I'll have her show up and help me just to make sure she doesn't get rusty at it. So please, please understand what's happening there. All right, are there any other announcements today? All right. If you're able, please rise. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close to Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, Pour out the mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and then mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing blood. May us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus. As we are to the source of the Lord, we shall serve God. Amen. Beloved God, word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, rich in mercy, by the sacrifice of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our dear deeds may reflect your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Light has come into the world, 
but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. talk to you today about a very obscure person found in the Bible, whose name is Melchizedek. We first hear about him in Genesis 14, almost simply as a passing footnote in significance, just a brief mention. Now certainly we've all read across the scripture, or at least heard it read as it was today. But we never really gave it a second thought. We see a name in the Bible. Oh, well, we can't quite pronounce it. Well, we'll just keep going. That's what we do. Well, today, we're going to take a closer look at this priest king and see if he really does matter to us or not. So let me set the scene. Abraham has just fought a great battle. And the victory that he has won was secured by God. And nephew Lot, he too has been rescued. Abraham is now headed home, moving south. And he passes this city on a hill known as Salem. He's heard about the king who runs the place, but he really doesn't know anything about him. Not because he doesn't care to, but the fact is... This king appears to have no past, as if he just sprung up out of nowhere. As Abraham and his host move through the area, the king of Salem comes out to greet him as a victorious leader and to see these troops that are following God. And it is then written by Moses, then Mechizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God Most High. Isn't that interesting? Along with the king coming out, he brings an offering of goodwill. A small gesture, but nonetheless one that was well appreciated. Bread and wine. It is during the niceties that Abraham finds out that Melchizedek isn't just the king of Salem, he's the priest of God Most High. That means Abraham isn't the only person in communication and in relationship with God. In fact, this guy is not only a king, but a priest of God's teachings. In this unknown land that God has brought Abraham to, he now finds a kindred spirit, what he feels is an equal, who doesn't have to be taught or convinced of his beliefs. This guy is already in. <laughs> Interesting how Abraham found maybe the only other person or people on earth who know God. And they are all living basically on the same piece of real estate. Funny how that works, isn't it? Have you ever traveled out of this area, away from home, and just by happen chance come upon another person who is a Christian? And there is an instant bond between the believers through simple conversation. That's how simple it is. That's what we're talking about here. Further, notice the gifts of bread and wine. Remember, there is no such thing as a coincidence. Especially when it comes to God. Moses goes on. 
And he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. Well, it would seem, from what we read, these two men really hit it off immediately. So much so that the king blesses Abraham in the name of God, the creator of all. This now shows the depth of his knowledge and strength in his faith, that both men know the old stories of the beginning. And they both credit it all to the same guy. Imagine that. They're theologically together. It's tough to find two Christians that are that way today. And praise be to God most high, who delivered your enemies into your hands. And with that, we've got praise and worship breaking out. Both men giving all the credit to God for Abraham's victory. It's almost as if he already knew about God's promises made to Abraham, about God having his back in times of trouble. And if you think back to last week's message, now that promise makes a little more sense, doesn't it? <laughs> then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. That ought to sound a little bit familiar to us. Abraham presented Melchizedek with a gift, a tithe of 10% of all that he had taken through the victorious battle. Any of this ringing any bells with anybody out there? All found at the beginning of the Bible. So, is this a significant event found in the Old Testament? There's only one more fleeting mention of Melchizedek in the entire Old Testament, and it comes in Psalm 110. That's it. And so, one could conclude that these obscure references to this mysterious individual could easily and simply be lost in the pages of the Bible. He's just a footnote. Well, not so fast. It is not until we get to the New Testament book of Hebrews that all the little bells and whistles start going off. Here the author, we credit Paul, but we're not absolutely sure, goes on a three-chapter dissertation on this obscure Melchizedek. <coughs> Chapters 5, 6, and 7 start giving us amazing information that allows us to begin forming a new picture of who this man really is. And from an extensive study, I believe, from my research, that it is very possible that this King Priest Melchizedek is what is called a pre-incarnate form of Christ. Yes, this would be Jesus before the manger. Now you may be going, huh? <laughs> Consider this for a minute. The similarities between Melchizedek and Jesus. And remember, there's thousands of years that separate this situation. Both are kings with an unknown beginning or end. Both are priests of the one true God, God most high. Both give blessings in the name of God. Both present, preside over, and handle bread and wine as a gift. Both are called king of righteousness. One is called the king of peace. The other is called prince of peace. One has no known parents and no lineage. The other had trouble getting others to believe who his parents really were and has had no offspring. The word Salem means peace and the word Jerusalem means city of peace. That city on the hill. So it would seem the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose existence has no beginning and has no end, together forever in perfect harmony and unity, wasn't just working as a team in the New Testament only. 
Through a bit of Bible study, we can find not just God, the creator of all, we can find the fingerprints of the Savior Jesus Christ in pre-incarnate form and the work of the Holy Spirit, certainly in individuals' lives all over in the Old Testament. Remember that change to Pentecost. For those who choose to be in relationship with God, profess Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and invite the Holy Spirit into their lives, know now that you are known, blessed, cared for, and have an eternity waiting for you in the glories of heaven forever and ever. That ought to feel pretty good. If you're there, yell amen. 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 Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have been with us and will continue to be with us, but it is us who need to learn how to see them and where to look. So in saying all this, does this king, priest, Melchizedek mean anything to us? I certainly hope you can see his significance. And if you can't, please go and look for yourself. Your eyes might just be open to a brand new truth that changes your life. And remember, God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if I got this right, God's been with us always and forever, and we just didn't really have a clue where to look for him and how to see him. But he's there on every page of the Bible. Amen.
Bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Lord, in your mercy. You sustained your people in wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought. Bring peace to places where scarce resources cause violence. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry and without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up to you in prayer the needs and concerns for Danny Watson, Wanda Groom, Andy Beaver, Dark Krauss, Kevin Blazer, Beth Huda, Wayne Mingle, Roger Romanalt, Marianne Markowitz, Jenny Hegerman, Ronnie Johnston, David Jacobs, Bonnie Marr, Danny Flieger, and Dave Kaiser. And now we add other burdens of our hearts today. Touch and heal each of these as no other can. Lord, in your mercy. We raise up to you the families of those who have passed away. John Stoma, bring comfort, comfort and peace to their ailing hearts. Lord, in your mercy. We share the joys and celebrations for Jay Yoder, Betty Gauber, Kaylin Watson, Bless them richly in this joyous time. Lord, in your mercy. Your son was lifted up that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all saints into fullness of their, your promise. Lord, in your mercy. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord pour out upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.